Hello everyone, it's been a chaotic few days, so what better way to relieve some stress than having a look at an Alpha Zero and Stockfish 8 game? This game was played in London 2018. We're going to look at it from the white perspective. Alpha Zero is playing white, Stockfish 8 is playing black. So let's just get straight into this. Alpha Zero starts with d4, Stockfish plays knight to f6, and then the c4, e6, knight to f3. Again, Alpha Zero plays this flexible, calming opening. Usually played by strong players like Magnus Carlsen. Alpha Zero uses this opening into full effect. It's very flexible. So after B6, they play G3. Both sides feed Chetto the bishops. And Stockfish hits in with Bishop B4 check. And White blocks it with Bishop to D2. Now Black can take here if they wish. Bishop takes D2. Has been played in a multitude of games. White usually takes. Black castles and then there's Knight C3. And the typical moves here are d6, castles, knight bd7, queen c2 and then queen e7, followed by e4, e5, d5, and then a5 and a3. And we get into a strategical game here where basically black's trying to place their knight on c5, and white's idea is to hit it with b4. Typically as well, black's idea maybe to play h6, followed by knight h7. And you typically hear White's idea is to advance these pawns on the queen side and try and infiltrate Black's um, position that way. But back into the game, after bishop d2, Stockfish actually retreated their bishop back to e7. So Black's got a very solid structure. Alpha 0 plays at knight c3 developing. Black castles and then there's queen c2. Black plays at knight to a6. So preparing to play knight to b4 and attack the queen on c2. To stop this, White plays a3 protecting the b4 square and maybe preparing to play b4 themselves but first stockfish plays c5 so stopping any b4 ideas and hitting this d4 pawn in the center if white decides to take this pawn off with d takes c5 black can recapture with the knight and after b4 black actually has knight c to e4 if white takes this off and bishop takes and queen b2 black actually gets quite an easy game with rook c8 Attacking the pawn, and if rook c1, black can just play rook c7. White can castle, but then comes queen c8. Attacking the pawn once again on c4. If white protects, then black can play queen b7 and play rook f c8 and move later. Again, this is actually equal for both sides, but black has a very easy game of it. And if you have the white pieces, you don't really want to give black an easy drawish game. So for this reason, alpha 0 didn't take this pawn off. Instead, it pushed it, played d5 instead, keeping some tension in the position. And the tactics are in alpha zero's favour here because after e takes d5, alpha zero plays the amazing move now. Knight g5, a very nice move. So it pins this pawn on d5 because now the bishop hits out at this b7 bishop for black. And if black tries to hit this knight on g5 with h6, white has uh, another tactical blow. They can play h4. Because if h takes g5, they've got h takes g5 at the end of it, with the queen and rook converging on this h7 square, and the pawn on g5 now hitting this knight on f6. If g6 to block, white can take, and if bishop takes, at the end of it there's knight takes d5, attacking the bishop. If bishop g7, then just bishop c3. And again there's nice, a little discovered attack on the bishop on b7, and white's got a tremendous position with a great knight in the centre. So after this knight g5 move, Stockfish played knight c7 instead, and alpha 0 just played h4 anyway, supporting the knight on g5. And after h6, we're into a very similar position with just the knight on c7 placed differently to the previous position we just saw. Knight takes d5 was played by alpha 0, so winning the pawn back in the centre. And again, black could play h takes g5 here, but again it's suicidal. After h takes g, attacking the knight on f6 again, if black takes in the centre with knight takes, then they can play g takes f6, knight takes f6, and white can play bishop takes b7, rook b8 and just play bishop to d5. Again, the rook and queen converge on this h7 square. After b5, let's say, bishop g5, white's got amazing threats of bishop takes knight followed by queen h7 checkmate. So black's in a, a struggling position here. Back to the game then, after knight takes d5, stockfish just recaptured. Knight takes d5, white recaptured again, and Stockfish played d6. I'm going to put a nice little arrow here, illustrating the point that the queen is still threatening to play queen h7 at some point. 
Now Stockfish11 actually recommended to play f4 here, supporting the knight even further, because if b5, then e4 looks good, and then g6, knight h3, a5, and castles. And both sides have actually got equality here, but it's very double-edged. I guess if this was a human game, um, I probably prefer to play white, because um, their attack is attacking the king side, which is the most important side. However, black does have tremendous counterplay with these three pawns all converging on the queen side. But after d6, instead of f4, alpha 0 just shuts this down straight away. So shuts down any counter-attacking from black. You just play the move a4. This stops any b5 ideas. And as I say, just stops black from having any counterplay. Stockfish plays queen to d7. Alpha 0 gets a bishop into a much better position with bishop c3. Rook f8 from Stockfish, and Alpha 0 now castles queenside. Supports the pawn on d5 with the rook and the bishop, and just prepares to attack now. So after bishop d8, e4 is played, again supporting this pawn on d5, and now white's got tremendous centre. At some point they may be able to play even f4 as well, like we saw in a previous variation. Again, if black takes um, this knight off with h takes g5, there's h takes g5, and if knight h7 with the only square it can go to, white can just play f4. And he's preparing the move e5 with the discovered attack on this knight on h7 with the rook and queen. If bishop takes g5, trying to give back some material, again, white can just play e5. Again, hitting this knight. If knight goes to f8, then is e6, attacking the queen. And if f takes e6, white can play takes on g5. And if e5 there's g6 and white's got a very nice position the point is after queen g4 and bishop e4 black's position is just in complete lockdown this bishop's rubbish on b7 this knight's terrible um, and this bishop just does a great job of protecting these two pawns which are great blockaders of black's position and white can swing a rook across maybe a queen across and then maybe the bishop as well easy win for white should be anyway so instead of taking the knight though stockfish just played knight g4 instead Bishop h3 was played, pinning this knight. And finally, Stockfish does take this knight off with h takes g5. If white recaptures this pawn now with h takes g5, then bishop takes g5 is just good for black with check. King b1 and then just f5 supporting the knight on g4. And if e takes f5, there's knight to f6. And white's got a terrible position all of a sudden. Black's a piece up and this f5 pawn blocks in their own bishop on h3. So back to the game after h takes g5, white played the move f3 instead. So the knight's pinned on g4, and f3 just adds another attacker, attacking this knight and trying to win back the piece. f5 was played, and alpha 0 takes the knight off, black takes on g4, and bishop f1 is played. So preparing maybe bishop to b5, with a pin against the queen and the rook. Now if rook f8 here, I was thinking this, then white can play h5. After rook f3, there's h6, and this is the way white should continue their attack. If bishop f6 are trying to defend, white can play moves like e5, and if d takes e5, they've got h takes g7, with queen h7 moves coming in, so queen f5, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, and there's an amazing move at the end of this, bishop a6. Let's just have a look at that again. So what does bishop h6 do? It moves this bishop on b7 away from the protection of the rook on a8. So bishop takes a6. Now rook h8 can be played with check. King takes g7. And rook takes a8. After king g6, rook takes a7. And this is a great position for white to be in. They exchange up. And now have a, a great passed d pawn with a rook behind it. So for this reason, I know it's a long variation. Rook f8 was not played in the game. Instead, Stockfish continued with g takes h4. Alpha 0 did go for bishop b5, attacking the queen. Queen f7. And now actually played g takes h4 instead of taking the rook on e8. I guess Alpha 0 thought this bishop on b5 was actually a better piece than this rook at this particular time. If rook f8 here though, white can still win with rook to g1. After queen f3, king b1, rook f4. There's bishop e2. Queen takes e4, a trade of queens, and bishop takes g4, and this is still a great position for white to be in, just because all the pieces are converging on this g7 square. 
Instead of rook f8 then, bishop f6 was played to blunt this bishop on c3. White pins this bishop. Stockfish plays rook f8. And there's a trade of bishops. Alpha 0 continues with rook f4. So attacks this g4 pawn. Queen g7 protects the pawn. But now bishop e2. Two pieces attacking this pawn. And now Stockfish tries to counterattack with queen h6. Pinning this rook on f4. But alpha 0 can just play rook f1 to protect it. The only way to protect this pawn now on the g4 is to push it up. So that's what Stockfish does. And now queen d3 though from alpha 0 once again attacking this pawn. At the moment as well Stockfish is actually a pawn up. However white's position is just tremendous at the moment. Stockfish plays king h8 realising it can't protect this pawn forever. Alpha 0 takes the pawn back. Queen takes g3. And Stockfish plays rook a to e8. So at least they've developed all the pieces. However, this bishop on b7 is actually a really bad piece at this moment in time. But Stockfish's threat is to play rook takes e4 because this rook on f4 is still pinned against this queen. So bishop d3 was played. Stockfish reroutes the bishop to c8. A better square for it. And Alpha 0 finally gets off this diagonal with king to b1. And now they may have some threats against this f6 pawn with the doubled rooks. Stockfish played rook f7, queen f2 is played, so three pieces now converging on this f6 pawn. And if uh, Stockfish tries to protect it with king g7, I think white can play a5 here. After bishop d7, given by Stockfish 11, white can play bishop e2. And play could continue rook g8, bishop g4, bishop b5, attacking the rook, rook h1, bishop d3 check and king a1. I just want to see how play could proceed. And the computer suggested f5 here. After rook takes f5, rook takes, bishop takes, king h8. White play rook d1. And I just want to see after bishop b5 how white could sort of win this game. So after queen f3 takes on a5 and e5, I just realised that after this e5 move, um, the point is that black's pawns are incredibly weak and they've got a very solid centre for white now. It looks though basically white's going to put all their hopes into this past d pawn once black takes this pawn off perhaps and then play maybe d6 ideas. Just because I think black's pawns are incredibly weak here and this was alpha zero's idea or intention anyway. So going back to the game, queen f2 had just been played. Instead of king g7 to protect the pawn, stockfish played bishop with d7 attacking the a4 pawn. But now comes h5. If queen takes h5, of course, there's rook h4, pinning the queen against the king. So instead of taking, Stockfish played rook e f8, protecting the f6 square once again. Bishop c2, protecting a4. Bishop e8, and then rook to f3. If queen takes h5 now, I think white can just play rook f5. After queen h6, there's queen to g3, attacking this d6 pawn. After bishop d7, rook 5 to f2. Preparing ideas like rook h2 to pin the queen against the king. If rook h7, there's queen takes d6. And again, I think white's got a superior position here, just due to the past d pawn for white. So in the game, after rook f3, it's very hard to play a move for stockfish now. It's sort of in sort of a zugzwang position here. Because taking the pawn on h5 is bad, and there's not a lot of moves available to stockfish. So in the game, they played rook to e7. Offering a trade here, so rook takes f6 was played, alpha 0 accepts, wins another pawn. Queen takes f6, queen takes f6, rook takes, rook takes. And maybe stockfish miscalculated. Bishop takes h5, doesn't work due to rook h6, rook h7, and then rook takes d6. And basically it's 4 versus 3. If bishop g4, there's rook g6. Bishop d7 and e5, and white's got two passed pawns in the centre and should be able to convert this. So I'm not sure why Stockfish just gave up a pawn, but after rook takes f6, there was king to g7. Rook takes d6, bishop takes h5, and then king c1. And we see again it's four versus three. Stockfish's king is quite close to the action though. But after rook e5, a5 by alpha zero trying to mess up these pawn structure for stockfish stockfish took so it's equal pawns but stockfish's position is not very good the pawns are incredibly weak all in dark squares here and should be easy pickings for this rook king d2 was played bishop e8 
And then finally rook h6. We see White's well, going to try and pick apart these pawns. Stockfish played rook h5. Bishop d3 was played to protect the rook. a4. And Alpha Zero played d6. It was bishop f7. d7. Rook h8 to stop Alpha Zero getting a queen. But then comes e5, and here Stockfish resign the game. So finally admitting defeat. So why resign now? Well, if rook d8 to stop the advancement of this pawn, bishop f5 can be played. And the point is now this pawn on e5 does a great job of screening this king away from the action. This rook also does a good job. But the point is now this rook can just pick apart these pawns, and there's nothing really black can do about it. And even in this position, if um, Stockfish h really crafty and plays bishop e8, attacking this pawn because it's pinned against the king then even so white can just play king d3 and there's not really much stockfish can do if they play bishop takes d7 then just rook takes a7 and again this bishop's pinned and white's going to win the game and even if we go back here i added some arrows because it's very easy for white to win they can play king c4 rook takes a7 rook takes a4 at some point and the king can pick apart these pawns so overall, Alpha Zero played an incredibly nice game once again against Stockfish. And it's very hard to see where Stockfish went wrong, but I would argue that even from move 10 after e takes d5 and knight to g5 already, I think White has a good advantage already in the, out of this opening. So yeah, this was a great game played by Alpha Zero. I hope you enjoyed my commentary. If you did, please check out some of my other videos. It's always appreciated. And if you have any ideas, please do drop them in the comments below. I always try and respond to every single comment. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.